I was sitting in my living room, staring at a massive stack of paper in front of me with Java programming fundamentals printed across the top. My laptop had died during the first week of university and I had no money to repair it. Most people would probably have dropped the course because programming without computer sounds pretty impossible, right? But sometimes the most unexpected obstacles force you to find creative solutions that sometimes end up changing everything. So this could be one of the most unconventional stories that you've heard of someone becoming an engineer. And it was also a little bit embarrassing for me back then. But what happened next not only got me through my IT studies, but landed me an internship that would become the foundation of my successful engineering career. I had started my IT studies at a technical university in Vienna. I had zero background in IT. I hadn't taken one small course or a school subject in IT. I didn't even know what software development even was or what programming language was. So I was starting with zero knowledge and I was equipped with my super old laptop from Compaq. I don't know if they still exist. And it was the first week of the university. I was sitting at a lecture and I started installing some programs on my laptop that we needed for the class, like Java and some code editors and so on. And my laptop started sounding like someone was starting up an old tractor. So basically the CPU could not handle the load and the fan in the laptop basically started making these wild noises. I was sitting in the back and I remember my teammates in the front all turning around to see what the hell was going on in the back. A week later, I was doing my homework at home and in the middle of it, my laptop literally just blew smoke and died forever. So I had just started my semester and I had no laptop and I had no money to repair it or to buy a new one. I had already budgeted for the entire semester for the studies and the rent and you know the necessities and stuff so there was no way i could afford a new laptop so i asked nikki my partner and co-founder at tech Winana, if i could use her laptop when she was at work now the laptop was working and it was enough to browse the internet but it was a windows laptop with very little ram so it was too slow for programming tasks i would study the theory at home and basically read on this laptop and then I would go to the computer lab at university to actually do my programming tasks and homeworks, which was also a pain because I didn't have the admin access on those lab computers because it was managed by the university, so I couldn't install many of the tools that I needed. The third week in the studies, I was sitting in the computer lab and doing our very first exercise that we had to submit for our Java programming subject. And we had to basically write hello world program that's it that was the exercise after three hours of fighting with the task like installing the code editor and figuring out how to set it up to connect it with java and to run my program i finally managed to do something and i submitted the exercise to the professor next day i got a notification that said zero from hundred i failed the hello world exercise the professor left a kind note that said that I could try again. Now, I wasn't surprised that I failed because I couldn't understand any of the concepts or what I was even doing. So I tried my best to somehow understand it and fix it. And I resubmitted my exercise and I failed again. Zero from 100. My professor probably thought, wow, this kid's a hopeless case. How can you fail Hello World? Twice. I'm not actually sure if I was the first one in her whole teaching career to do so. But I had a different perspective because I knew myself. I knew that I could learn anything no matter how hard it was. But only if I put enough time and energy in it and use a better learning approach. So I made a plan. I knew that I couldn't catch up with the exercises because by the time I failed the simple exercise for the second time, we already had the next exercise, which was way more difficult. And I knew that I didn't understand any of the concepts around programming, like runtime or code editors or installing stuff. So I felt like I was literally tapping in the dark, just doing stuff blindly. I thought 
I can learn the concepts first like really well and then go back to the syntax and the exercises because I thought understanding the concepts would clarify so many things for me that when I actually wrote the code and ran it, I would know exactly what I was doing and what was happening in the background. So I did something that may even be shocking for most people who are learning programming or any engineering subject. I went ahead and I printed out the entire Java programming fundamentals book that we were using for the subject, 400 pages. Well, I didn't have a laptop anyway, so I thought paper was a pretty good option. I started devouring that book. It had all the concepts of programming, like, you know, variables and functions, function signature, keywords, garbage collector, explained in detail with syntax examples. And it went even deeper than what we had to learn for the university like not only how to write functions and algorithms, but things like where the references of functions and variables were stored in memory or how, or how the function logic was read line by line by the code interpreter. You know, the things that were not necessarily required from the students. I learned how the written Java program was actually loaded in the memory and interpreter to run and to be executed on the machine. So I went in depth because I wanted to understand the core and the underlying foundation of everything that I was doing, which is exactly the way I'm trying to teach important concepts on this channel as well, because I know that it worked for me. So if you like what you're hearing, you can subscribe in order not to miss any future videos. I was at home every single day and next to the other subjects that I also had to learn for the university, I dedicated three hours every day to study this book page by page. I would literally stand up and read a paragraph about function signature, for example. I would analyze it step by step, then reread it multiple times to really grasp the concepts. Then I would explain it to myself and just drill into it until it made a click in my brain, where I felt like now I really got the concept. And if you know programming and IT in general, the concepts can be really abstract. So sometimes it's really difficult to imagine those and to make them click. And after that, I would go through the code examples of the actual Java code to whatever concept I was learning. And again, I would analyze and study the code line by line. And then I would write the code myself on paper from memory. I probably looked like a crazy person pacing around and talking loud some Java programming concepts and writing Java code on paper. Thank God I was alone in the apartment. There was no witness of it. And I have many of those concepts and code examples that I learned from the book now almost 11 years ago, still imprinted in my mind. That's how strong and deep that learning process was. This was a slow process. Like I made very slow progress because I went deep into every topic. So instead of moving fast to the next one, I would literally just reiterate and reread the same paragraphs over and over again. I took my time because somehow I knew that this slow pace would at some point flip the switch and accelerate my learning towards the end. So I knew that at some point I would just have exponential speed up of learning. Almost the whole first semester goes by and I haven't submitted any exercise since that Hello World fiasco. And I rarely go to Java lectures either because that time was valuable for me to actually learn from this book. And I'm pretty sure the professor at this point probably thought I had already given up or just dropped out completely or something. So I have zeros in all the exercises, but there is one final lap at the end of the semester that basically combines all the knowledge from those exercises into this one large project, which was 25% of the grade. And after that, we have the final exam that was 50% of the grade. So I would need almost 100% of both of them to pass. I knew that I have studied this book to the core, but I had no idea whether I was actually ready for this large project because I didn't know what it would look like. And until that point, I have been writing all my code on paper. So I didn't actually know if I could take an exercise and actually put it into code. I was in Starbucks with some of my friends and we received this assignment from the professor. I remember I nervously opened the PDF 
and start reading through it. So this is a project that we need to build in Java. So I read the first paragraph and my brain in parallel starts processing how to write this in code. And it was super easy. I knew exactly how. I continue, we need to add this functionality. I know exactly which functions I can use for it. Next functionality, also crystal clear. So I read through this entire assignment and already in my mind, I know like a clearly laid out plan how I'm gonna program this. And I feel this childlike excitement and happiness when they can't wait to open a present. I couldn't wait to start coding this program as a manifestation of how much I have learned and how confident suddenly I was with my skills. So I open my borrowed laptop from another friend and start coding. In two hours, I have the whole program ready. I run it, I test the functionality, I make some small adjustments, I finish it and I submit the final exercise. And after the longest week of waiting, we got the results online and I scored 100%. A week after that, we had our final exam and it was super strict. We couldn't use internet, we couldn't copy any existing resources, we couldn't reference the official documentation, so we had to know everything by heart. We couldn't even Google like syntax examples, but I knew that I had the entire knowledge imprinted in my brain. Everything was loaded in the memory. So in the exam, we basically had to write a bunch of small programs, we had to answer some conceptual theory questions, and then at the end, we had to do a few larger projects. And we had two hours to do all these things, which also tested how fast we could complete everything. So I sit down, the timer starts. The first task, easy. Second, easy. I basically breeze through the small programs that we have to write in Java because I know immediately what to write and I didn't even really have to think about anything. Then comes the theory, which is a piece of cake anyways, because I know everything theoretically in depth. So I actually write the most in-depth answers to those theory questions to kind of show off my deep theoretical knowledge. And I'm getting excited as I progress through the questions, as I'm seeing all my hard work and month of intense learning turning into this most effortless final exam I probably ever had at university. Then I get to the larger projects and they are much easier than the assignment that we submitted, which I also had coded without referencing any resources, so no problem at all. And the exam program was evaluating our results in real time as we were submitting the answers. So on the last page, there was a button that said, complete and see your final grade. I took a deep breath and I clicked complete and I see 100% score. And I even finished the exam early. I couldn't believe how effortless and amazing it felt. But I hadn't just passed the Java final exam. I had built the strongest, the most unshakable foundation of my future engineering skills and also the confidence that I can become a great engineer if I wanted to. So with that confidence, I went home and I prepared my CV to start applying for internships as a programmer, starting from the second semester. And I used the one month semester break that we had to learn website building skills, to have basically a, a more well-rounded knowledge for internships. So I strengthened my JavaScript skills, which knowing all the programming concepts from Java was actually extremely easy because a lot of the concepts translate to other programming languages. And at the start of the second semester, I was hired as an intern in an IT company that used Java in their backend. Now, you may be wondering, so did you buy a laptop with the first internship money? Well, actually no, I bought RAMs. Let me explain. My internship paid actually very little, barely enough to cover my basic expenses. So for me, it was more for building my work experience than pay. But Nikki actually offered me to use the laptop most of the time because she wasn't really using it, but I was still not able to use the laptop to program on it because it was extremely slow. It just had very little resources in order for me to be able to code on it. So I Googled, how can I increase laptops resources myself? And I watched a YouTube tutorial about how to increase the RAM 
to maximum capacity of the laptop. So whatever laptop limit is itself. I took the laptop and I unscrewed the back and I saw that there were two RAM slots. So I went online and I ordered two four gigabyte RAMs for like 16 bucks or something and increased the laptop's RAM from two gigabytes to eight gigabytes. And this was already a huge improvement. But then I also learned that Linux was a much better operating system for programming in general. And it also used less resources than Windows operating system itself to load. So I Googled again, how do I install Linux on my Windows machine? Again, I watched a YouTube tutorial on how to do it with a dual boot and I installed Linux. And finally, I could program on this laptop without any slowdowns and the laptop just freezing up in the middle of programming task. And I actually used that laptop for at least the next 12 months and probably learned most of my programming during the internship period on that laptop as well. Exactly a year later, I replaced it with my own first ever MacBook laptop with my senior engineer salary. And that's my story of how if you really want something, you will always find a way. And the harder the journey, the bigger the story. I hope this video inspires you to do something even with the most limited resources that you have available. And if it does, please let me know below. And with that, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.